flashbacks from Alan Wake. JH. Ktonian statuette. Okay. Suppose we can we can make that hole that? again. Mm-hmm. All sorts of interesting stuff here. Let's not trample on the accursed statue statuette or something. Yeah, that's a news. If somebody wants wants to use this, apparently. So, um, I need to number six four one. Okay, it worked. Ah, the news. The things showed news, but it's not letting me to interact with it. Or is it something about behind the news? I can't save the game. If this is scripting bug. <laughs> no, is this? Ah, Jeremy's hiding, right? Hello, is anyone there? Steamboat, Jeremy, I need help. Wait. Can you hear me? I'm stuck in the mud and the fire is taking Jeremy, me. where are you? The motor is dead. I can't do anything more. Hang on, Jeremy. I'll figure something out. I'll get the boat running. Jeremy was calling out for help, but Conby couldn't figure out where the voice was coming from. For a moment, Conby wondered if the boat itself was Jeremy or if he was below it somehow. Steamboat, it really. didn't matter right now. Jeremy was clear on one thing. He wanted Conby to get the steamboat running and out of the mud. Funny, funny, crazy game. Fix the steamboat. Sauce.
Needs two shots. Oh no. Fudge. The boat's wedged itself right into the bayou. If I get the motor started, I could try reversing back into the river. Strong, maybe. Stuck. Uh, that's stuck as well. And no interest from this side. Okay. Jeremy, where are you? We need to go to the engine room. pretty weak. I just need something to break it. Oh yeah, you, you can get, get the engine room through the through the engine itself. Yeah, make, makes sense. Let's check the aft of the ship first. Okay, this is where we were. Blocked. Sledgehammer. Yes, please. And more. More weapons here. Okay. Fair. So the engine is still working. This definitely needs fuel. Okay. Empty gas can.
key item. Starter engine. Yeah, I suppose uh, Steamboat could have like lots of different kind of stuff stuck into this uh, imp impeller drive. Okay. This is an elevator. Okay. Suppose we need to do something for the hole here. That's a lot of mud. I wonder if the ship will float. Probably not. Jeremy might be a lost cause though. Uh, fudge. I'm all out of bullets. Yep. Not good. Shells. Yes, please. But once again, shotgun seems to be like powerhouse in this game, but uh, Thompson is like meh. Years ago, Frederick needed me to die. You're not making any sense, Jeremy. <laughs> Come back. Find hey. your focus. Hey, I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. Hey, I escaped hey. my doom, my destiny. Again, find hey. your focus. Hey, I'm right here. What the hell is going on? Now everything is wrong. Nothing is in hey. place. I'm right here! Calm down, Mr. Conby. What do you want? <laughs> Did... Were you... 
Were you not talking to Jeremy right now? I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually I don't... I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go look for Jeremy. Good. Let me know if you find him. Well, that was interesting. That was Jeremy's self-deceit? A steamboat stuck in the mud? I'm not gonna pretend I understand any of that. <laughs> it's a bunch of psychoanalytic nonsense. Uh, okay. But he, if, if the good doctor is here, then he's not in his room. Jeremy was calling out for help, but Combi couldn't... Ah, but pay a Dr. Gray visit in his apartment. This place seems to be a more evil now. Detective, am I glad to see you. Lock the door, will you? I don't think Dr. Gray would appreciate us snooping around. Yeah, well... What's going on here? This feels so strange. Ah, this is old-fashioned... Uh, ...alone-in-the-dark experience. So suddenly we are thrown back in the 1992. Detective Conby felt removed from himself. Like driving drunk, he carefully tried to navigate his environment. What the hell was going on? Was he finally losing his mind? At least Emily was here to call the police if he went off the deep end. It's locked. It's locked. False book. Golden fleece. Hmm. Oh, book. There's a book missing. What did you do? What? Oh. I was just rearranging the books. Well, come on. Let's check it out. Aesthetic views. I think I'm beginning to understand. Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion. What were you saying about mass delusion? Dorsetto seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Even the name Dorsetto refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. Dorsetto was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... the black goat of the woods with a thousand young, or Shubnigra. <coughs> and that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. Well, not really. <laughs> yeah. Good to finally meet you, Mr. Hartwood. Okay. I'm here on the behalf of your brother, Philip. You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes. You're from the Cerro, no? That's right. I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see if there is anything I can do to help you and your family. Okay. I understand you're full of imagination. You make up a lot of things. I suppose. And you obsess over them, blurring reality and fiction. Sometimes. Do you want to tell me about the Dark Man? No. No, I, I don't. That's all right. Perhaps there is something else you can tell me. 
Something you know to be made up, but you hold dear. Juan? John? Who's John? No, Juan Luis Jorge. Oh, wait there a moment. Here, take a look. Is he... Oh, he is the author. It's a magnificent book. Life-changing, even. The real Juan is long dead, but I like to think of him as my, my friend. My most beloved friend. I see. Do you often do this? Fantasize about people you read about? No. No. Well, there is Jacob. Who is Jacob? Turn to the last page. Oh, it's a newspaper article. The Prisoner of Ice. Prisoner of Ice. Oster. Ouch! Is he also your beloved friend? Oh, no, Doctor. Not at all. He is the fire that fights fire. Yes, I think it's clear your overstimulated imagination, this mania, needs to be tempered for you to live a normal life. I know your family calls it the Heartwood Curse, but I want you to know that there is nothing supernatural about your condition. It's all inside your head. And with that, I'm very qualified to deal with. In time, you will be cured. In time, in time. Yes, in time we will exercise all your demons, all the dark men. Yeah! Please, Mr. Hartwood, calm yourself. What happened? Oh, don't you worry your little head about it, Miss Hartwood. Your uncle and I just had our first breakthrough. So Emily was here. That mark on the floor looks like talisman positions, but from which direction should I look at it? It. The Snake Dagger, a monograph by Yael Klein. In Ludwig Prinn's book on pagan rituals called The Mystery of the Grave, as translated by Nicholas Vahi, there are several references to a sacrificial dagger called the Snake Dagger. It has long been thought of as a poor translation of the original text. That it would be more appropriate with Worm Dagger from the Latin Vermis Cutrum. This seems natural, following the recent consensus that the original title of Prince's book, De Vermis Mysteris, should literally translate to the mystery of the worm. However, this would take away from Vahi's great effort at translating the underlying meaning of the words and revealing several cultural beliefs. While Prince certainly was using the term worm as a symbol or synecdoche for death and the dead, which is made clear by the contents of the book, in the case of the dagger, we shouldn't be too hasty to dismiss his translation. Reading through Vahi's correspondence with his patron, it appears that he had more than just the Latin text at his disposal. Vahi had dug up Prin's living relatives and uncovered several cross-referenced historical texts and an actual snake dagger. The dagger was dated to the early Middle Kingdom of Egypt and had such a clear shape of a wave that Vahi considered calling it the sinusoidal blade. Knowing the full story, it seems prudent that he chose to translate it as snake and not worm. There are several reasons why this choice of word helps us understand the pagans that Prin's book attempts to describe. The symbolic value of the shape becomes more apparent when reading about the use for the dagger. In the passage of possession and exorcism, we find the snake dagger poisons the poisoner within the victim and is therefore pacified. Where the literal text would tell us that the worm dagger trumps the demon possessing the victim, it tells us nothing of their reasoning, only that somehow this dagger wins against the demon, like it had the better hand in poker. Vahi's translation allows us to follow the underlying logic to the ritual magic that is being performed. Poison the poisoner. Sounds like fighting fire with fire. That to hurt the demon possessing its victim, the priests would have to fight back with a power that is known to the evil they are fighting. 
The snake dagger is therefore not only a good way to describe its form, but it also helps us understand how it could be thought of as a useful tool for exorcism. Finally, it also helps us understand their relationship to lunacy, that it was thought of as something poisoning the mind rather than controlling it. What is also interesting to note is that the possessed are always considered poisoned in their head and not their heart. The snake dagger always went to the eye of the possessed, leaving them partially blind, if they had the good luck to survive. You think all of them are in this cult business? Even Jeremy? I'm not sure any of them have a choice at this point. We just need to find a way to stop all of this. Okay, can't use anything. What's in here? Okay, closet. Huh. Has that been there this whole time? Furniture key. been so busy trying to free your uncle from the promise he made to the dark man I guess I kind of just let everything else go don't worry detective I feel like we're close I'm sure Jeremy will turn up if he is part of the cult he wouldn't want to miss the feast of st. John I just need enough information to make him see the truth I hope you're right but I doubt he'll show up not as long as the dark man's got him hiding Hello? Hello? It, it, it can't be. Who is this? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the dark man. You can't save him. Who well, is this? I wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective. While you still can. Hmm. I suppose that's that's our clue. So let's let's do it by without numbers then.
trunk. The trunk and the uh, drawing in, in the floor. You okay? You look a little frazzled. Just stupid telephone. I know. I tried calling the police earlier. The telephone is completely dead. It's uh -huh. Yeah, no, the telephone isn't working. <laughs> okay. Okay. That leads to Nar Narnia or something. I think something. you're gonna want to see this. Is there something in the closet? Yeah, there is. You don't see the very obvious gate leading to whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion metaphor? I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. It's fine. It's fine. Catch you later. Are you going inside the closet? <laughs> yeah. You got a problem with that? No. Do what you think is right, detective. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Goodbye, Miss Hartwood. All right. Now where we are? In the snow. Cold. He image, he image terror or something. Yeah. Pretty close play, cold place he's dreaming. Finish summer weather. Ah, oh, flare gun. Flares. Okay, flares are full. We found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean. Okay. After a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt was our most keen member of the expedition. He had been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items among the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. Uh huh. The site was a remarkable find for any explorer, and we were all enraptured in our search for enlightenment and meaning. The surviving architecture seemed almost unearthly in origin and astonishingly sophisticated. The metal Jacob was searching for was abundant, almost ubiquitous. We were so taken by our find that we were surprised by the sun falling below the horizon. As we quickly picked up our gear, ready to head back to our camp, Jacob von Ostadt declared that he wanted to stay. He was adamant. We begged him to reconsider. The night would be getting colder by the hour, and we feared for all our safety. Jacob refused, threatening us with violence if we wouldn't leave him alone. As the snowfall turned heavier, we left him there on his own. The next day the weather became worse, and we had to spend hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking he must be dead. I had an urge to make one final attempt to save him. So I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares and headed toward the coast and up the climb towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him transfixed by a burning sky, that celestial lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony, for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him, and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly, and he said, You must leave now, Ashton. Go, and never come back. 
And so I left. Sallow offering. Prisoner of ice. Okay, interesting. Machine gun card is okay. That is normal for the expedition, I suppose. So what is there? Switch between the revolver and and the uh. okay hold okay this is how we change between the flare and. And the revolver. That is interesting. Hey, you! What are you doing here? What is this place? Turn uh, okay. You're not wanted here. Whoa, take it easy. I'm not your enemy. Oh, yes. You're wrong, detective. You're wrong. Need a new melee weapon. I'm always low on, on shotgun shells. Okay, this is a puzzle. Align the stars. Whoa. So, how do I... Stars align, Jeremy, or ah, maybe that is what you need. 
to temper that mania of yours. Okay, now it's rotated. Okay, that's weird. Apparently we need to stab him several times. God's sake, stay dead, will you? Once again, the time is a charm. I'm all out of bullets. Oh no. To die. Yes. That was the eye. Oh no. Now we are going. But the eye was the place where you need to step. Okay. Weird. Weird. All the memories. So, what caused the um, hole in the attic? Oh no. Did I exercise? I did everything! Aren't you happy? Stupid charlatan! What more do you want from me? You want me to lose my mind? Oh my lord! Doctor! Baptiste! <laughs> Jesus, what were you thinking, compadre? <laughs> it wasn't the dark man. Chapter five. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Attacking the mine. Stepping Jeremy in the eye and attacking the maid. You're awake? You are awake. Mr. Conby's up. Hey, buddy. I thought you'd be knocked out for the rest of the night. <laughs> Come on out and join us, will you? I'll save you some gumbo. Good to have you back. You gave us all a good scare. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Sorry for manhandling you, but you were being violent, you see. You stabbed Jeremy. And then punch Dr. Gray. Are they... okay? Jeremy's a little strange, but everything's back to normal. Really? All thanks to you, combat. You want to try standing up? Well, <laughs> it isn't the hero of the day. How are you feeling, detective? Never better. How about you two? I wasn't mad, it was hey, the Jeremy, I didn't doctor. Do too much damage, did I? I... <laughs> Things are fine. Very quiet. 
What's up with him? Painkillers? No. You see, despite you having the finesse of a one-eyed butcher, you managed to lobotomize, dear Jeremy. I did what? It's actually quite impressive. It's not like I hadn't considered it myself. I just wish Jeremy could have been helped without reducing his personality to that of an oyster. But he's gonna live. Of course. As long as someone keeps feeding him, he'll outlive the best of us. Break the pact with the dark man. Yeah. Does Emily know about Jeremy's condition? Yes. She seems to be handling it quite well under the circumstances. Good to see you back on your feet, detective. Have some gumbo. Thanks. I'll save it for later. <laughs> but it's not over yet. Alright, tell me. What the hell's about to happen here? Every year we have a little turn-the-page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. Symbol... It's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know, just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. Okay. That is one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. Well, I can imagine a lot. What are you looking for? Just keeping an eye out for the stone. Radio says it could be a wild one. Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother. No whispering. Except Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Hell, there are praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever there is no other and the black coat of the woods. Hear us, mother, and take pity on us. Take pity on us. And take pity on us. Ever there's a great race. Ever one of the black coat of the woods. Hear us, mother, and take pity on us. Yeah. Accept us, judge our world. Judge our world. Judge our world. Stop! Are you crazy? Yeah. This year's what needs to happen, Carpe. Yeah. Grace? Stop! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Stop! Yeah. Stop! Get my uncle out of here! 
Oh, I see he's burning the tree. Come with me. Like in the first game. Okay. Jeremy, come with me. Jeremy, come here. No, there has to be a sacrifice. Yep, it's a thousand young. You could actually mistake Dark Young with the, with the trees. Okay. Stop. Stop it. Oh no. I can't let that monster leave Dorsetto. I have to stop it. Okay. Where, where I can get out of here? How? Oh. oh, climbing over there. Yep. Love a crafty and horror. Most of Call of Cthulhu man, heroes do. I don't think it it has any. Weaknesses. It, it might have some weaknesses. I'm all out of bullets. Oh no. Some two 
Phantom out. No, no. Oh no. Oh no. Battle so fast again. Uh, hitting it to big spots is only thing I should be doing. Yep. yep. Like that. That was a good shot. I'm, I'm stuck, 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 stuck. Come on, load, load, load. Okay, there's lo lots of those. Thompson, Thompson, Thompson. Don't get it. Oh no.
a lot of bullets. Oh no. Did we kill it? Okay, the building is coming down on it. It might kill it. Or then not. Okay, this was crazy. tell you there was so much evidence their devotion to the black goat was like nothing I've ever seen before I felt so dumb believing any of it but I'm glad I did yeah uh, you did are you okay not really thing is out of order this isn't the way the story goes I shouldn't be alive yeah oh you're welcome buddy How are you doing, sweetie? I kind of like it. You ruined everything, but I'm not mad. Uh-huh. Okay, good thing. All right, you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Can I come? I thought you said you didn't need saving. Don't leave her. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us. This looks like a place after my Call of Cthulhu players have run through the adventure. Looks about same. Are they were boat pen. I wonder if, if Emily can get to the boat pen. We didn't see it. So New Orleans for the black coat. Yeah. Okay, so first character played through. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. Kind of saw some things coming, but in the end Running around Jeremy, running after Jer Jeremy in different, different kind of weird places was something I didn't s foresee. This game went to the weird factor, went high pretty fast and that was really cool. It was doing its own thing. It wasn't straight, straight up uh, remaster of the, of the first, first Alone in the Dark from 1992. But clearly did its own thing and I'm glad very good uh, some bugs uh, that they took away the enjoyment gunplay wasn't so fun and there were no chance to dodge which I was surely uh, missing in the end, in, in end fight so there's couple mandatory boss fights so that's kind of poor but yeah kind of so Things, things developing towards the similar end than in first game, but yeah, first game was all about escape from house, but this was more like escape from house and take the Jeremy with you. With you. So it was it was interesting, and uh, the fact that second character has their own story, own 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 cutscenes, own story. Uh, is is welcome plus so this has like extra playability but yeah kudos for the locations they were crazy and good and uh, story kept me in, in its creep for a long time 
anyway thanks for watching uh, even if you watch this uh, later at the YouTube as a smaller cut please like come su subscribe and uh, yeah uh, the thing is if people don't watch my content then the YouTube algorithm won't uh, won't recommend my content to anyone else so getting getting watches and vi visits and time time to watch is very hugely important for the small content creators like me anyway thanks for watching i'll log out and probably next week will be pretty normal we are still finishing up the rogue trader so that's 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 the idea Anyway, I'll bid you farewell and good night.